Today, I'm going to show you two features from Perplexity, one that is relatively new and another one that existed for a while, but I only just realized just how amazing it was. And so let's dive in and I can show off how you can use these tools in your own life and how useful that could be for you. So first of all, the first one is called Perplexity Labs. And this is the one that's a little bit newer. It's, you know, I, I'm coming to it a little bit late because, you know, as I've mentioned a couple of times, we just had a move and a lot of things have been in flux, but it's called Perplexity Labs. And the way to get there is just from the home screen of Perplexity. I am on the pro plan. I don't think you can access labs on the free plan. Actually, let me just quickly verify that. Yeah, that's correct. It's not available on the free plan. And if you're on the pro plan, you only get 50 of them per month, which makes it probably the most throttled I've seen any feature on Perplexity, which typically is not something that throttles. Perplexity gives you tons and tons of usage, but you do get only 50 of these per month. So that's a little bit more than one and a half per day. But that said, I think 50 is still plenty. You're not going to use it that many times most of the time, unless you're go really going on a research sprint. The way to get there is from the main chat bot area here. You can see you've got your regular chat here you can do a deep research here and then if you click this little light bulb icon you get to the labs section and labs is it's kind of hard to describe exactly but it is essentially an even better version of deep research one that actually it'll do more research for one it'll also create charts and graphs and even mini apps that you might need in a particular project so think of it as this just almost agentic type of functionality. And I'm, I give props to them for not using the word agent because agent is like way overused. But this is actually closer to being an agent than a lot of what other people call agents <laughs> actually are. And that's because it actually goes through and figures out what it needs to do and then does that. And then you can ask it follow-up questions and things to get it to continue to work on whatever it is you want it to work on. But like if you're in a situation where you don't know what you don't know, this could be a really good research tool for you because it will find those things that you don't know in a particular area. Now, as authors, obviously this channel is all about creative writing with AI. And so one of the things that I really am interested in is how can we use this to write a book? And now just to start off, this is not the kind of tool that I would use to actually be doing any writing, right? But this is an excellent tool for research and pre-writing kind of stuff. So let me just show you an example. If I go and say, I want you to research everything there is to know about the romanticy genre so that I could write a book in that genre. I don't have to give it very much else than that. I don't have to say, oh, uh, I want you to identify tropes and like common character things and all of this. You don't need to get into that much detail because it will figure a lot of that stuff out. So I just wanted to do a deep research on the romanticy genre, which by the way, if you're looking for a hot genre to write in, this is the one right now where people are making the most money. Just saying. Uh, and I'll get some heat for that in the comments because uh, some gatekeepers out there don't like the idea that there's romance in their fantasy. But as a fantasy author myself, I really could care less. You know, I let everybody just read what they want to read. It doesn't affect the kind of fantasy I write or the kind of fantasy I read. So that's just a, a side note. Uh, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. But um, let's go ahead and run this, making sure that labs is selected here. I will also go here and select social. Maybe we'll select academic as well, so it can do a really thorough search. Uh, I, most of what it needs, it'll find on the web, but sometimes you'll get certain things in social uh, discussions from accomplished authors and, and stuff like that, or readers that will have little tidbits of information that is useful to know. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll let it run. And it, this does take a little bit of time to actually get going. As you can see, it says that it takes, uh, there's nine minutes left. A deep research for me usually takes two to three minutes. So this is a little bit more than that, and it says it can take up to like, I don't know, like an hour or so, depending on the topic. I think this is a relatively easy topic for it to do, and there's no coding or anything that it needs to do. So it'll get through this. You can see we already jumped from nine minutes to six minutes. So it'll probably take a little time. I have had one or two instances where it froze on me, uh, which is unfortunate. And if that happens, you just run it again. Unfortunately, I think that does use up 
Actually, I'm not sure that uses up one of your credits or not. Uh, so that's that's something for me to investigate further. But yeah, we're down to five minutes. And you can see the sources that it's looking through here. Uh, so we've got things like romanticy, an old genre with a new name. What is romanticy? Defining fiction's hottest genre. What is romanticy? The blog, the novelry. Romantic fantasy on Wikipedia. The rise of romanticy. How romanticy fantasy books are, blah, 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 et cetera. So it's going through doing a lot of research. It does have a couple of really awesome odd sources here like modern popular estrada music in ukraine i'm not sure where like what that has to do with anything here you can continue to see what it's looking at it says investigating popular romanticy books and authors from 2024 to identify current trends and influential works in the genre and then here it's going exploring common tropes and themes in romanticy will help identify popular narrative patterns and character dynamics in this next section, it says exploring romantic fantasy world building magic systems of writing tips will provide essential guidance for your novel. Analyzing recent publishing trends and social media influence will help identify current market dynamics for romanticy. So it's walking through this process and you'll be able to see this process after it's done. If you want, you can uh, see the entire thought process this, that it went through. This is interesting here. It says gathering a comprehensive overview of romanticy genres, key elements, tropes, market data, and popular authors. And it's doing this with some Python code that it is writing its Itself. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this will probably be like a chart or something to look at. Researching beginner guides and writing craft advice will help you develop your romantic novel effectively. And then here we are at the most recent step, creating a detailed guide to assist you to writing a compelling romantic, etc. And oh no, we're not done yet. But it is assembling the guide. It looks like still has a couple of minutes left. So we'll go ahead and let that finish. All right, and it's <laughs> it it claims here it says a complete 160 page handbook titled the complete guide to writing romantic. It is now ready for you. It didn't actually write 160 pages. I don't know where I got that, but it did give me quite a few assets that I think are super useful. First of all, we can see if we go to steps here, we can see that whole process that we just saw it working on if you want to look at that. But where we really want to go here is this assets tab. So we click on this and we can see various things that it created. For instance, we have this um, Python data here, but this one right here is the one we want, the complete guide to writing romanticy. And if we scroll down and then we can load more here, you can see this is actually a pretty intense guide gives a lot of information here stuff that we again we often don't know what we don't know we wouldn't know to even ask it to research certain things so first we have genre definition and core requirements what makes a true romanticy we have a central romance equal fantasy elements fantasy world building must be as developed as the love story balanced integration neither romance nor fantasy should overwhelm the other character driven Focus on relationship dynamics and character growth. Series potential. Most successful romanticy works are part of a larger series. And then we have key distinctions. Fantasy romance. Fantasy story with a romantic subplot, which... Honestly, most stories have a romantic subplot, so that's not necessarily the same as having a romanticy if you just have a fantasy story with a romance subplot. Romantic fantasy is a romance story in a fantasy setting. Romanticy equal balance of both elements, neither can be removed. Uh, and I would say from what I know of romanticy, having read a couple of books in the genre, I would say that is pretty accurate. Then we have uh, essential tropes and elements. Most popular romanticy tropes. We have character-based tropes. Enemies to lovers, uh, definitely a, a popular trope in the genre. Morally gray love interests, faded mates and soulmates, grumpy slash sunshine dynamics. Story-based tropes. We have star-crossed lovers, only one bed or forced proximity, uh, secret identity reveals, forbidden love. And then we have the fantasy-specific tropes, dragon writers and magical academies, fairy courts and fae politics, chosen one prophecies, found family dynamics. Those are all definitely common in the genre right now. And then we have a character development guide. So if we want to create our characters, we could do that here for everything from the protagonist here to the morally gray love interest. Then we have world building for romanticy and what that looks like. We have plot structure and pacing where it actually went through and gave us a three act structure for the book and what happens in each act, which is insanely useful and if you kind of took this and paired it with something like my plot module or any other you know pick your favorite story structure you could take these particular tropes make sure that they're included in the chapter in that act and actually have something pretty solid to start with and we have like writing craft techniques and this one i thought was interesting and very poignant uh, we have point of view strategies you can have dual pov which is the most popular alternating chapters between love interests 
shows both characters internal struggles oh like that's definitely works we have a comment on show versus tell interesting heat levels and content very important to know there's uh understanding spice levels because a lot of romanticy is particularly spicy but not all of it in fact a lot of the stuff that i've read uh, and enjoyed has been more on the sweet side there's a just off the top of my head one that i read that i quite enjoyed was called the spoken mage which i think you would classify that as romanticy very good series then we have publishing and marketing considerations which you definitely definitely want to look through if you plan on publishing one of these things like talking about book talk there's a whole book talk essentials section here um because book talk is definitely a place where romanticy thrives at the moment definitely if you're writing romanticy i would say probably your primary marketing outlet should be tiktok assuming tiktok stays with us and then we have successful author examples sarah j mass rebecca yaros definitely uh, some big ones writing exercises and prompts so it's giving you all this stuff and then finally there's a conclusion at the end so this is essentially like your own personalized guide for this particular topic and you can do this on any topic that you are interested in and I could even go from here and pull in this asset and uh, let's see if I, we can copy the information here and ask follow-up questions. Ask it to help you brainstorm characters and world building elements that are consistent with this guide. Lots of stuff like that that you could do. So uh, Perplexity Labs is definitely one of my favorite uh, new features to come out in a long time. And I've already used it quite extensively, especially for research purposes. Although I'm sure there are a lot of other purposes where you could use it in other situations, particularly something like I could see you planning a book launch or something like that could be really helpful. If you go to the labs feature here to start a new one, it will give you a couple of different suggestions. And I like that it's actually tailoring these to me. Uh, I didn't ask it these things. These aren't like past searches or anything, but it knows based on my past searches of other things, what I'm interested in. And so for instance, it has prepare a comprehensive guide to VR mods for classic Star Wars games. Uh, that's a very niche thing that I have searched about in the past. Uh, so it'll give you a couple of suggestions there of things that you could use it for, which I think is cool. All right. So that brings us to the second feature that I really like about Perplexity. Now, this one has been around for a while and the type of feature has been around for quite a while in other chatbots as well. And that is tasks. I believe it was ChatGPT that was the first to roll out tasks. And at the time I thought, was this going to be like a task manager kind of thing where I can keep track of my to-do list and all of that? And that is not what tasks is. And I've since sort of discovered how I could use it in a way that was that's super helpful. First, I wanna just briefly to give you a little background, show you the discover tab in Perplexity. It's one of the unique things that Perplexity has is that you can get your news through Perplexity. Now it's not the most complex feature yet. I'm hoping that they will give it a little bit more customization options inside of the discover tab. But for now, it, it is actually a good way to get sort of mainstream news. Uh, or financial news or sports news and stuff because uh, you can sort by topics and things. But you can't do anything like say, I want news from these specific sources. I want you to like do a roundup of these specific sources, uh, which I would find useful for a specific like niche topics if there's certain YouTube channels or blogs or something that I follow or maybe like local news uh, for where you live locally. Like stuff like that could be really useful and it's not part of perplexity yet. But I did discover a new feature that could kind of replace that. And it's actually, it does a really cool job. So uh, to get there, you go to your account and from down here in your uh, account, you select tasks. Now I've created one so far that I've just been using it to test it uh, and comparing it with others. And I still really like the perplexities version of it. The one I've created right here is probably this is gonna be the most useful form of tasks. And that is to do regular research for you. So researching the same topic every day or every week or however long you wanna research it. For those who don't know me, I'm a big nerd, uh, right? It's the nerdy novelist after all. And uh, I used to be really into Star Wars. I still am. But I was big. back in my college days, I was I had two podcasts that I did that for Star Wars. I would go to Comic Cons and I would interview people out there. The first interview I ever did was David Wolverton, who wrote The Courtship of Princess Leia. It's also known as David Farland. Uh, and he ended up becoming a mentor for me. And I became good friends with his sons. And like it became this whole thing. But back then I would hang around on Twitter a lot. It, it was called Twitter back then. And I would 
could find that like if you were really ingrained in that world, you could know about a lot of the news before it came because there'd be rumors and things floating around. People would start talking about stuff and you could really get a sense for the whole industry about how it's going, right? It's hard for me to describe. But I've since distanced myself from Twitter and felt like I'm a little bit out of the loop a lot of the times. And so I created this to go and research um, what's going on every day in the fandoms that I am a fan of. Uh, so the prompt is, I want you to search the web and come up with any latest news around my favorite franchises, which are Star Wars, Star Trek, anything Tolkien or Lord of the Rings related, and DC Comics, particularly the DC Universe or DCU. It's okay to include rumors, but make sure they are labeled as such. Only give me news or rumors that have happened in the last 24 hours. And I have this go every weekday at 9 a.m. In fact, I'm going to change this to daily. And I'm going to change it to, well, no, let's just put it at 7 a.m. Because that's like when I wake up so I I know that this is available for me. And I have it do this as a deep research. And then I can select my sources uh, as being the web and social. I definitely want social because a lot of the rumor information comes through social, just what people are chatting about. I don't really need academic or finance for this one, so I can go ahead and save that. So that's a really great feature right there. Now let's say I wanted to do this as well, but let's do something in the self-publishing world. So I could say, let's do a weekly item and we'll do this as a deep research and we'll set it up to go, let's say on Friday. So set it up weekly. It'll go on a Friday at, we'll do this in the morning. So around 7 a.m. This will be a deep research. We'll have it search web and social. And the prompt I'm gonna give it is, I want you to research everything there is to know in the self-publishing and traditional publishing world, giving me information that would be relevant for authors in either the self-publishing or traditional publishing spaces. And once I have that in a place that I like it, I can go ahead and hit save. Um, And now that I'm doing this, I'm feeling like it would probably be a good idea to come up with an uh, author-specific AI research tool that could be useful for me in creating these videos. So to help me sort through a lot of the different AI stuff out there, I can say, hey, go out and research what's new in AI that would be relevant to authors. Because there's a lot of stuff out there, like, uh, for instance, AI music, for example, I don't get into on this channel that I just, I don't necessarily need to know about, but I would like to have something that could filter out a lot of the noise and just be like, hey, uh, authors might be interested in this one and this one and this one. Uh, So I'm going to go ahead and set that up right now. I'll set that up to go also on Fridays. I want you to research. I am an author who talks about AI for authors and for creative writing in both fiction and nonfiction spaces. I want you to research all of the latest news and releases that could be relevant to an author audience. Focus on news and releases from the last seven days. All right, so we'll go ahead and save that. And now I have this great resource for me to go out and do a lot of research that could be relevant when I'm planning the next week's videos. Uh, So that's just something uh, that we could put together there. And now every time there's new news in that space, it will send me an email anytime it runs. And the email, one of the things I like about the email is it doesn't give me the entire research. The email, what it does is it gives me a quick summary of everything that it found in his research in just like three or four bullet points. And then gives me a link that I can come here to perplexity and read the whole thing. So I can actually glance through what it gave me and I could just be like, oh, yeah, I'm really interested in that. Or perhaps I'll see it and I'm like, okay, it looks like it's a slow news week. There's nothing really to report there. So that's one of the cool things about how Perplexity works. Now, this task feature is available in other platforms. Off the top of my head, I know it's available in ChatGPT and Grok, but it's not something I see talked about too often. And I do like that I get a little bit more flexibility in Perplexity than I get in those platforms. For instance, being able to select whether it's a labs or a deep research or a regular search, whether I, it can search the web, academic, or social or finance, having a little bit more control there. Uh, And if you're not using deep research or labs, you can even select which models it's using, which is another useful feature there as well. So I think that's a really cool feature. And I just thought I'd share these two things with you. I know I've kind of gone a little bit longer than I thought I would, but I hope this is useful for you. If you would like to get perplexity for yourself, I have a link down below. It's a referral link. And if 12 of you sign up, I essentially get 12 months free of perplexity. I don't get 
get any money other than just, you know, a free perplexity account essentially, but I only need 12 of you to do it. And uh, after that, it won't even work. So uh, if 12 of you would like to try it out, go ahead and I will appreciate that uh, and your support of the channel. So thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.